now I got a little walkway. last night but now it's raining and we're gonna take the dogs for a walk looks like maybe we got a few inches but I assume it will all melt today since it's raining So we're gonna go into Willow um, and we're just gonna see if the hardware store has this. It's got a hairline crack in it and it connects to our hot water heater and it was leaking. Okay, so our hardware store doesn't have this, which doesn't surprise us because it's a really small hardware store. So we're gonna go into the main town tomorrow anyway, so we just won't have running water for the rest of the day. So this right here is a piece we need to get that the hardware store didn't have. So that's where we need to put it back on. So in the meantime, we are back to no running water. So since it's raining outside, we have been looking forward to making this kind of like pot pie, stew pie thing. I don't really know what to call it. Um, and the reason is because we're using venison. So the first thing I'm gonna start with is cutting up some potatoes. We already have the stew that's been canned, but I just wanna add a few more potatoes to it. I'm gonna get these potatoes cut up. Not really finicky about how they get cut up. I just wanted to show you guys again what happens, especially these, these potatoes we've been having it happen. It's basically wants to be planted. It's trying to grow, or it is growing. <laughs> so it's using its stores in there and sending off shoots. I'm just gonna break them off. But the potato is a hair squishy, still fine to use. Anything purple too, or kind of just a little tidbit, in the gardening world is actually healthier for you. It's more nutrients. I don't know specifically why, but the purple, what gives it that purple color does give you more nutrients. I believe it's higher in antioxidants is what it is. So I'm gonna get these cooking. We're just getting an early start on a dinner. Hopefully it'll be ready early today. So I don't know if you guys remember this. This is our venison stew. It's one of our ways we were able to take meat across the Canadian border. Oh, that's not the best knife to do it with. That is a solid seal. Lost some of our liquids in there, Sorry. but it's still, still good. Yeah, this is all our own ingredients. Celery, potatoes, carrots. In fact, I'm really not even sure what else is in there because we made it so long ago. But it smells 
It smells really good. It smells literally like you opened up Campbell's can. I can smell it. But it's not Campbell's. It's venison. <laughs> so what I'm gonna do is, I thought there was a lot of liquid in here. So I wanted to burn some of that off. It doesn't actually even look like there was. So this is all pre-cooked. So what I am going to do is add, I think I'm gonna add some diced tomatoes that we have. I wanna give it more, even more flavor. And we're going to simmer it for a while, really low heat because I think I told you guys my our tomatoes we used were a little bit watery. We didn't use the right kind, so we ended up with a little bit of a watery, more watery paste or diced tomato. So we're gonna let that all sit in there and just cook off some of that water. So the biggest difference I have noticed with fresh potatoes, and I think Eric and I kind of agree on this, and we've been growing potatoes for three years now, is that they seem much softer and creamier than a store-bought potato. It could just be the varieties that we're growing, but um, with, with that being said, they just they cook a little faster. So because these are gonna get baked in a pie, they're gonna be cooked a second time around, I'm just gonna lightly cook them. In fact, I'm probably gonna turn them off now. They look done. So we're gonna head outside real quick. Eric noticed a flat tire on the Polaris yesterday when we got home, so we're gonna fix it. Yeah, so we got a flat tire sometime yesterday, so first thing we're gonna do is pump it up and find out where the hole is. dish soap in there and I always like what we're gonna do is spray over the tire and find where the leaking air. I always like to start on the valve stem. Make sure it's not coming out of there. Which doesn't look like it is. So yeah just go over the whole tire and hopefully what will happen we just did this for our trailer too is you'll see uh, little bubbles. We haven't found it yet. But it actually went flat pretty fast. So, I'm pretty bummed. These are my, we got the players with the shiny fancy wheels. And I knew I felt us hit it on a rock yesterday and see the bubbles? There. We pinched the sidewall. We were out there and we also noticed too that our, I need to put a little more air pressure on these tires. They're just a little too soft for all the rocks we're going in. Uh, it's no wonder we got a flat. But uh, in a car, you pinch the sidewall and you have a flat like this in the side and your tire's done. You got to get a new one. In an ATV like this, it's just going on trails. It'll be fine. One thing you should always have is a tubeless tire repair kit. You can um, fix the tire on the go. It takes about five minutes to do it. I'm going to show you how to do it to this real quick. Super easy. So this is the first part of the kit. This is the reamer. What you're going to do is put it in the hole and you're going to go in and out and you're basically gonna ream the hole out and watch your eyes. There's our hole. There it is. So you want to do that and just basically what you're doing is you're you're uh, smoothing out the hole and making a nice uh, round surface for the plug to go in. So okay when you're buying one of these kits buy if there's a cheap one and a more expensive one get the more expensive one because these handles break like nothing. Anyways this is the actual plug and this is how you're going to insert the plug and to do that you got to thread it through there kind of like a needle and what i always do is pound it down until it's flat enough to get through there and you want it just like that halfway through um if they always come with rubber cement you can use it if you want it, uh, it actually doesn't really i don't even know if it helps i've done it both ways so you can just put a little on there. Okay, when you pull this out, the air is gonna start leaking out fast. So basically I'm gonna pull this out, push this in, 
and and then I'm gonna leave just a little bit hanging out and I'm gonna pull this out. I'll show you it's gonna happen kind of fast. So you want to go to about there and then this had a little slit in the bottom so I'm just going to pull it and that plug will stay in there and the tool will come out. Okay, last thing you want to do is trim these down, leave about a quarter inch hanging out. So take that, that's garbage, and then what you want to do is just test the leaks. As you can see, we're good. So now I'm just going to Eh, that's probably good in pressure actually and yeah, we just we carry these plug kits in our Polaris in our truck And we also carry uh, Air compressors, so we'll always be able to fix the flat and if we can't fix the flat We'll just ride it on rim and buy new tires <laughs> So these plugs like that it's actually really reliable our Old one probably had five plugs like that in each tire and it ran pretty good So on to the next project So we made our dough or a crust. Um, Eric usually makes this for quiche crust and he uses olive oil. We have used lard before for pie crust, so we're using lard and we used coconut oil because we are not, we don't have olive oil. So primarily though the lard is what gives you that nice flaky crust. We're gonna let this sit for a little. Okay, so we got that pushed out. That's the bottom layer and we mixed our potatoes with our stew. We did strain a tiny bit of that juice. It was just a little too much. We have some green beans in here too, I found. We're just gonna put that in there. Looks like we made a good, a good amount. Don't want it to be too full. I don't want too much moisture in there. I think these vegetables will give off some more moisture when they're cooking. Beautiful. So we're gonna lay that top piece over and I make it a fork out and crimp that. So we're not aiming for beauty, we're more after taste. And then the last thing you wanna do Just put a few slits in there as it's cooking. Just do three like that. Okay, so we're gonna get this into the oven that Eric preheated to 350. And I think we're gonna let it cook for about half an hour. So it looks pretty good. Eric just took it out of the oven. We're gonna obviously need to let it cool for quite some time as it, it seems to be boiling. But it turned out pretty nice. All right, let's see if we can get this ginormous piece out. Aha! Venison stew pie.